Hi and welcome everyone to this lesson in our course for wind turbines. In this lesson, we would like to discuss the power available in the wind spectrum. We would like to understand the amount of power which is available inside the wind. So first, let's see what will happen here. We have wind here, okay, moving with a velocity v. Okay, we have a wind flowing with velocity v. Now this wind uh, is covering an area called A. Area A. Okay, area A. This is the area covered by this wind. Okay, and this wind will move a distance called X. This is a distance traveled by the wind. Okay, from here to here. As you can see, it forms in the end a cylinder, as you can see here, with a height X and area A. Okay, so the first thing is that we would like to understand what are the factors affecting this wind power, the power available inside this wind. The first factor is the amount of air or volume of air, the volume covered by this wind or air. Second factor, the speed of air, the velocity of wind, V. The velocity has a great effect on the wind power. More velocity leads to more power. And more volume leads to more power. Third thing is the mass and density of air flowing through the area. The density and the mass of the air flowing through this area or the cross-sectional area A. Okay. Now, the kinetic energy of a stream of air. This air, we would like to understand the kinetic energy. What is its kinetic energy? The kinetic energy is simply, as we know, half mv square, where m is the mass of air and v is the velocity of air. Okay, this is the kinetic energy of the wind flowing. Now, remember that the mass is simply equal to the density multiplied by the volume. Okay, density rho is our density, the density of air. The volume is the volume of air flowing. The volume, which is covered by this cylinder. Okay, the volume of this air, which is area, multiplied by the height of the cylinder, which is x. So it will be rho ax, ax is the uh, volume. Okay, so density multiplied by volume gives us the mass. Rho is the density of air, A is the cross-sectional area covered by the air, which we use in the end, we use the area, same as the area covered by, or the swept area, or the area of the uh, rotor plates, okay, area covered by the rotor plates. And finally, X, which is X small, not X capital, X small, is the distance traveled. Now, energy, energy is equal to half, the kinetic energy, half m, which is the mass, will be rho ax, rho ax, and the velocity square, okay? We just take this mass and substitute it in this equation. Now, what is power? We would like to know the wind power. So we knew, we know now the kinetic energy available in the wind, which is half rho ax v square. Now we need the power. Power is simply equal to energy divided by time. Or if it is changing with time, then we use differentiation. It will be the power available inside the wind will be d over dt, the differentiation of the energy with respect to time. So the differentiation of this function, or this one, for example, half, velocity is constant. The velocity flowing here is constant. So it will be V square as it is. We will not differentiate it. Now we have the other term, which is the mass. Mass is changing with the motion of this uh, air. So it will be M dot. Okay, here we have a dot, which is the differentiation. So half MV square will be half M dot V square. Now, the differentiation of the mass, mass is equal to rho ax. So, it will be rho a 
differentiation of mass with respect to time is dx over dt dx over dt so we will have in the end dx over dt or the differentiation of x with respect to time is the velocity so we will have half rho a half rho a dx over tt is the velocity multiplied by v square gives us v cube so the power available inside the wind will be half rho a v cube now the question is how do we measure the velocity of wind okay so we have a wind measuring uh, device an anemometer this one anemometer is used to measure the velocity of wind and the direction of the wind okay which is this device have many different shapes it is available on the turbine as you can see here you can see this is a rotor hub which is connected to the blades as uh, the blades are connected to it and you'll find here the gearbox and then the generator above all of this above this box there is a wind measuring device okay this one has different shapes this is used to measure the wind velocity and the direction of wind okay now we would like to understand the wind power density versus velocity of wind what is the effect of velocity on power so the power is equal to half the density of air multiplied by the area v cube okay which is the, the equation which we just obtained now remember that here the area is the area of the turbine this is what we uh, consider okay not the total area of the wind only the area which is covered by the wind turbine or the swept area okay so we say here area of the turbine okay because it is the most important factor here now since we talk about wind power density what does power density mean we divide by area so power density when the power density is equal to half rho divide this by area gives us v, uh, area will go away and we will have v cube so it will gives us how many wattage which is the power per area or per meter square for each meter square of this turbine or this swept area so the power equal half rho v cube power density now we would like to plot it versus the velocity you can see that the velocity is cube okay so the power power density is directly proportional to the cube of the velocity so we, we can represent this like this power density in y axis and in x axis the velocity v okay so as you can see it is a cubic relation so as the velocity increases the output power density starts to increase okay so what is the effect of the area first the area of the turbine the more area we have for the turbine the more kinetic energy it can extract from the wind which means we can generate more power that is the first thing second thing is that the velocity the more the velocity of air or velocity of wind the more power we can generate okay as you can see here the power which we can generate is directly proportional to the cubic of the velocity okay so it is the uh, it increase in the cubic relation okay so any small change in velocity will lead to large change in the power so in this lesson we discussed the power available in the wind spectra and we obtained the relation representing the power and velocity and area and we plotted the power density with respect to the velocity of wind